Hi, welcome to TechCrunch TV. I'm Sarah Lacey and I am joined by RockU's new CEO, Lisa Marino. Hey Lisa, uh, thanks for joining us and I guess congratulations on being CEO of RockU. I mean, it's, you know, not the company it once was. Is this a job you're excited about? Of course I'm excited about it. I've been at RockU almost three years now and it's a company that my family, frankly, has been involved with since the beginning as well, since my husband also worked here. And so there's a lot of um, passion and loyalty and history with Rock U as it relates to the Marinos and the Choice. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I first, the very first person I met with Rock U was your husband when he had the job there, and then he <laughs> left and you took over. I mean, yeah, you know, I'm kind of joking that you've been bait and switched, but this is obviously a company that you care about. How did, how did you get involved? And I guess, what is it about Rock U that has kept both of you so interested? So I joined Rock U in July of 2008. Um, mainly because we purchased some automotive games and I came over to help monetize those. Um, very quickly, I was leading the sales initiative because my background is in um, brand sales and running sales teams in general. And, you know, after six or eight months, I ended up um, taking over more of the overall media business as my husband went to his own initiative. And, you know, shortly thereafter, um, ended up also taking over the overall operations for Rock U, so both media and games, um, and basically have been leading the Rock U initiative since October 1st of 2010, mm -hmm. so about six months now. Okay, great. Now, um, you know, as I mentioned, Rock U is one of those companies that, you know, had a lot of hype and attention at a certain point in time, was very early on the Facebook platforms, did very well, and has kind of had its thunder stolen by companies like Zynga and others. Um, so, you know, let's, it's very hard to do turnarounds in the consumer internet. You and I have talked about this before. It's something that we've seen with Dig. It's certainly something we're seeing with MySpace. Why are things going to be different for Rock U? So completely agree that a turnaround is difficult. Um, I believe actually we've been very effective and successful in the last six months. The first, um, the first element was really we took some hard decisions early on around the DNA of the company and the things we wanted to focus on and commit to. We really decided that social gaming was where we were going to place our stake and be successful. Um, we think the platform in terms of Facebook in general, we're still very bullish on it. We think there's new demographics emerging. We think the product values of games are definitely increasing and improving. Those are places where we really can um, succeed and differentiate ourselves from Zynga, we believe. Um, in addition, when you think about social, I think the definition has broadened substantially in the last six to 12 months about things being limited just to a Facebook environment. Um, I know we're very bullish about mobile in general also, and including that particular venue or platform as part of our social definition. Um, over the next 12 to 18 months, you might see another one to two venues um, emerging as well. And I think that, again, definition of social really becomes much more robust over time as people look cross-platform and want to access their gaming experiences from wherever they are. Mm -hmm. So give us some numbers. Um, what, in the time that you've been sort of interim running the company, what are things that you've achieved that you've been particularly proud of? I know that you guys have had some key new hires. Um, give it, tell us a little bit about that and also some of the numbers. So beginning in Q4, uh, we obviously in, you know, started out the quarter with the RIF. That was definitely very challenging for the company. Um, after that, though, the three main leaders of the company really buckled down and focused. We cut burn by about 60%, um, which is great because we are well capitalized as an organization at this point. Um, we beat revenue numbers in Q4 by 40% um, based on what our plan was. So we took, um, we took some tough decisions and, and dealt with some of the low hanging fruit in terms of issues and really turned the company to a positive, on a positive trajectory. Um, in addition, we did two acquisitions. Those are now bearing fruit in a very effective way. You see Gourmet Ranch growing aggressively on app data um, in a very transparent way. And the Ternua acquisition we also did in September, that team has brought real gaming DNA into the organization and some real leadership 
that we did not have at first. And so those, you know, those have panned out extremely well for us. Mm -hmm. So um, how, I guess the biggest question, how do you get people to come work at RockU? I mean, we, you, we talk about in Silicon Valley, it's like one of the most intense hiring wars we've ever seen. And I mean, even companies <laughs> like Zynga and Twitter and Facebook and Google are having a hard time recruiting employees. You know, what do you say to get people to come work for you and people who have taken the job, you know, what is it that excites them still? Well, so it's, frankly, it started with Jonathan Knight. When we recruited him in the August-September time frame, it was really about this vision of what we could be and the assets we have as an organization and where we can take social gaming. And so once, we, once JK agreed to join, we started being much more aggressive about, again, bringing in key game DNA. Um, his pipeline, as well as um, another leader, Steve Cartwright's, um, their Rolodex has been incredibly helpful into bringing in that core talent. Um, and in Q1, we also really started building out a broader executive team. And again, you see this, you, you, you see JK building the game pipeline. You see his vision for where we're going creatively. And that is something that's very compelling to people outside of the company who are very passionate about games. And so that's what got Julie Shoemaker to join Rocky, for example, plus just the overall robustness of the media business. We brought on Katrina Sio as our SVP of marketing. Again, another gaming veteran as well as media veteran. And we start rounding out the team in general with people who are experts in their various disciplines, but are really buying into this vision. Now, you know, sort of the Q2 initiative for us is around bringing in that VP and director level talent. Mm -hmm. And that's where we're focusing a lot of our hiring right now. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that you can do to make um, options particularly attractive to those people? I mean, I've heard of a lot of companies when they try to kind of you know, reignite themselves. They'll do certain things to reopen up the option pool, maybe to even do sort of a recap so that they can offer bigger chums, chunks of a company that already has a sizable market share, just needs creativity, so that employees feel like, you know, they're getting they're getting more there than just going to a raw startup, but they're still getting a big chunk of ownership. So we are definitely being creative in those areas and providing our team with the adequate upside that's motivating and compelling for them is very critical for us as we go through this, this hiring phase at the company, right? Everyone knows how competitive it is, particularly in social gaming, um, from a hiring perspective. And so we need to have not just competitive packages, but those that are more compelling. We really do need to be able to give our employees um, that opportunity for genuine upside. In a similar capacity as Rock, you had you know, three years ago when I joined. Okay, great. Well, congratulations again, Lisa. We'll be watching closely to see if you can pull off what so many other CEOs have not been able to do. <laughs> <laughs>